Pretty Loads for Life here, bring guys a brand new video. So, V Jump has finally leaked it leaked last night. And I'm not gonna lie, I already kind of looked at all the cards because, oh my god, we got so much cool stuff that I can't wait to tinker around with. <laughs> so, uh, since there is a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff, and we got four tabs, I think I'm gonna break it into two videos because the, these videos talking about V Jump tend to be like. An hour long and people don't want to watch an hour long video <laughs> granted people watch my hour long blackwing video so i don't know uh, anyways so let's get on with this first up we got the new volet archetype which is the archetype that uh revolver plays uh fairy vitting uh i just wish that i'm gonna be honest right away from the art style and everything and how they look like guns and their dragons and all that stuff they should have been able to work like with barrel dragon just just saying <laughs> okay <clears throat> so first and foremost we got Magnavolet Dragon, Dark Dragon, Effect Monster, Level 4, 1800 Attack, 1200 Defense, and they all have, uh, let's see here, yeah, they all have the second effect where if they are destroyed, and it's the end phase of the turn they were destroyed, you can special summon one Volet Monster from your deck except the one except itself. So Magnavolt, when he's destroyed, you can spell summon these two, and when they're destroyed, you can spell summon these two, or respectively, you know. That being said, they also have another common effect, where if a Link monster's effect that targets this card on the field is activated, you can destroy this card, then do something. So, like, for instance, with Magnavolt, you can destroy this card when it's targeted by a Link monster's effect, and then send one monster in the field. For auto vote, here's a dark dragon effect, level three, 16 by a thousand. He gets to uh, send one spell trap card on the field, whereas Magna Volet has to target a well, it's send one monster. And then uh, on his vote, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> uh, is sent from field to grave uh, by after you know with his effect. Uh, sorry, destroy it. You can select one monster in the field. That monster cannot attack. All sorts of effects are negated, and that is permanent, which is awesome. So, the Volets, they, they are, they seem interesting. They are heavily reliant on their links to go, though. I mean, I like how they can all float, but I hate it how you have to wait till the end phase for their floating effects. It kind of reminds me of TG's, if I'm being completely honest. But, however, their main effects, which is the effects that, you know, like they're supposed to be used for and everything... You gotta have their boss monster out, <laughs> which is Feral Low Dragon. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover him uh, real quick so that we can really fully talk about this archetype. So, Feral Low Dragon, he's a Link 4 Dark Dragon, uh, Link Effect Monster, 3000 Attack, Link 4. So, that kind of tells me that this, that, uh, that Revolver is gonna be the rival of Yusaku. And it's gonna be interesting because uh, we haven't really seen any indication that the Knights of Hanoi are gonna be. A full threat throughout the entire series so who knows maybe revolver like after the Knights of Hanoi fall flat he might like become just a standard uh, rival or something kind of like Kaiba so he links to the left to the right to the bottom left to the bottom right uh, pretty interesting links there uh, so that means basically regardless of where he is on the field you'll get to open up zones which is pretty nice so first up oh yeah by the way he needs three effect monsters first up this card cannot be targeted by monster effects which is pretty good i mean your opponent can't cure in him i mean kieran's banned anyways but you never know uh, your opponent can't uh get rid of him by a dryden they can't <laughs> get rid of him by 101 or castell or anything that first effect is really really good and then uh second effect once per turn quick effect you can target one face up monster on the field that monster loses 500 attack and defense your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effects activation so not only can you do it during your player's turn, but you can just target one of your volets, and then they activate their effects, destroy themselves, and then you, you know, you get to do stuff. Uh, it's kind of like you're loading a gun and then firing it. <laughs> That's my kind of general thought process on it. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the third effect, at the start of the damage step... Uh, oh yeah, by the way, the best part about this is that your opponent can't activate in response. At the start of the damage step, when this card attacks an opponent's monster, you can activate this effect. Gain control of that opponent's monster, placing it at one of this card's link points, but that monster is sent to the graveyard during the next turn's end phase. Which is pretty 
good. I mean, it, it's a freaking stat steal. My issue is, is that you will never be able to do battle damage with this guy attacking a monster. Uh, but, however, getting uh, really, really, really... Just being able to steal anything uh, is really good. And I really, really like that, being able to take control of a monster. Uh, you know, just by attacking it. Which is really, really stupid. Uh... I really, really like this guy as a boss monster is what I'm trying to say. And I'm getting distracted because my friend won't stop messaging me right now. <laughs> so, moving on. Uh, they got some spells, which is really awesome. And this card right here makes the deck somewhat viable, in my opinion. Quick Revolve, okay? I I'm kind of sad they didn't call it Quick Revolver. <laughs> you know, it's just a subtle reference to uh, the you know guy who plays the deck. Anyways... <coughs> Quick play spell card. Special summon one Volat monster from your deck, but it cannot attack and it is destroyed during the end phase. If you open up three of this, it's an automatic uh, one of the. Oh, actually, no, you didn't, you'll need to be able to just normal summon a monster too. Uh, but you'll if you open up with three of this and then one monster in hand, you can just go straight into Veral Dragon right away. Obviously, that's obviously that's incredibly bad. But however, being able to summon any Volat monster from your deck is just stupid, and it's not once per turn. Okay, so. You, if you got like one for one, you would because they got a level one, and they're dark, so you can use like uh, their darkness and stuff, and all those other dark supports. So they'll be able to really, really, really be able to capitalize on you know just being able to summon multiple monsters at once and stuff. Uh, but however, the issue is, of course, it only summons one volat, <laughs> but it's destroyed during the end phase, so you'll get to use their effects, which is pretty good. And then a uh, squib draw. I have no idea. I don't know anything about like gun terminology, so I don't know what a squib draw is. <laughs> this kind of sounds weird. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. Okay, the, the a squib draw. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Load, load, load. There we go. Look at that. Two bullets hitting each other. <laughs> That's what a squib draw is. I did not know that it actually had a term. Uh, so you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Uh, it's a quick play spell card again. Target one Volat monster you control, destroy it, and if you do, draw two cards. A draw a card for the deck. I love it. That's <laughs> just awesome. Uh, now, then, they do have other cards that seem to be made to work with the deck, but aren't actually part of the deck. Uh, like, as in, they aren't Volats, but they seem to be work, they seem to, well, work in tandem with the deck. So, first and foremost, we got Sniffing Dragon, which I can't tell what the heck this thing is supposed to look like. Kind of looks like a raptor. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks like a raptor. kind of looks like... Uh, it's weird looking, let's just say that. I like the artwork though. Uh, you can only use this card's name of uh, effect once per turn. It's a level 2, 800 attack, 400 defense, dark dragon effect. If this card is normal or special, then you can add another copy of itself from your deck to your hand. It is literally uh, a Pokey Draco. I'm pretty sure it was Pokey Draco that searches itself when it's normal summoned. Yeah, it's literally Pe Pokey Draco. I I'm actually curious now. Is it Pokey Draco? And I forgot I was in a duel. <laughs> uh. Anyway, so yeah, it's basically Polka Draco for itself, which is awesome. I love it. And then we got Gateway Dragon, who... Honestly, this card kind of reminds me of the alternate artwork of uh, uh, Firewall Dragon. Uh, you know, where like he's attacking or something. And that's what that reminds me of, at least. He has a Dark Dragon effect, level 4, 1600 attack, 1400 defense. You can only spell summon one card with this card's name per turn with the way it is written in its first effect. That is so convoluted. <laughs> I don't know why that just sound that the way saying that sounded so weird. If your opponent controls a Link monster, you can spell summon this card from your hand, which is pretty nice. So since Links are gonna be what they're forcing us to play, and everybody's gonna have to play them if you're not playing a you know the tribute fun, a tribute focus deck or something, uh, this card seems pretty good right there because it doesn't matter if you have a monster or not. Your opponent just has to have a Link monster. Uh, and then second effect, once per turn, you can spell summon one level four lower Dark Dragon monster from your hand. Obviously, you're supposed to summon Sniffing Dragon. You will then search another copy of himself that you can then normal summon and then go into a Link 3 with, which is pretty good. And then we got some random uh, Links, except for this guy over here seems to be part of the dra uh, whole dragon thing up there. Uh, so we got a Kashik Magician, which kind of reminds me of Alchemic Magician. It kind of looks like her. Uh, that or Slacker Magician. Yeah, really looks like her. Uh, might be another like sister or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe part of that lore. Uh, really like the artwork though. Who are these two? <laughs> That's my question. Who are these two? Uh, Caroline and Justine have invested other games. Uh, so, 
Dark Spellcaster, Link Effect Monster, Link 2, 1700 Attack, Up and Down. Uh, two non-token monsters of the same type, that is incredibly interesting, because uh, that makes it pretty easy to summon in a lot of decks. Uh, if this card is linked, summon, return all monsters at this card's link points to the hand. You can abuse this to, like, an extent. So, like, let's say you, uh, are playing Fluffles or something, and you, and you have a dog on field, and you go into this thing, you can bounce your dog back to your hand. And, obviously, also, you'll be able to get rid of whatever your opponent has, too, which is pretty good. Uh, once per turn, you can declare one card name, excavate... The cards from the top of your deck equal to the link arrow total of the monsters at this card's link points that are in mutual link with it. And if the declared card is among those, add it to your hand, send all other excavated cards to the graveyard. So, okay, so if you have a link monster pointing towards it, like basically if it's in a mutual link with another link monster, or your opponent has something, you can excavate the top cards from your deck and, well, you gotta call a card name. It's basically Archfiend's Oath, which without the 800 life point counter but it's harder to use because you got to have a mutual link with it uh so that is intriguing i like it i don't really think anything will really play it more than just using the return all monsters at <laughs> discards link points to the hand uh also the first effect and the second effect co totally counteract each other because if you go into it it, it it's not this is not an optional effect this is required so if you have a link monster in the zone right underneath it, your link monster will get bounced. And that's obnoxious. I don't know what Konami was thinking when they made it to where these two effects are completely and totally contradictory to each other. It's just something that kind of annoys me. Next up we got Twin Triangle Dragon. And sure enough, he's got like twin triangles on his hands. That's odd. Uh, link to 1200 attack right and bottom. So boop boop. Uh, two non-token level 4 or lower dragon type monsters. When this card is linked summoned, you can pay 500 life points and target a level 5 or higher monster in your graveyard. Special summon it to your field at this card's link point, and if you do, its effects are negated, if any. Also, it cannot attack with this, uh, this turn. By the way, something to interesting to note is that uh, this is not the YG organization just sorting it. This is official now. So, anything referring to graveyard is abbreviated as, y, uh, as GY. That is... Cool. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It makes things shorter and easier to read and everything. Anyway, so being able to summon any of your level 5 or higher monsters from your graveyard is pretty nice. But obviously you're supposed to use it for a link summon. Like, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> and obviously you'll be able to, you know, use it with uh, this guy for a link summon or something. And yeah, I've, as I said, look at this. They're giving uh, like like recommended uh decks and stuff now <laughs> which is interesting and yeah i think this guy's part of it right i think uh twin triangle dragon yep and they recommend playing three of them in the deck which is interesting because the deck doesn't have any level five or higher monsters <laughs> uh like just do four three wait they're all dark so why was it recommending to play agni mazid the Fanister? i'm confused they're all dark and they were recommending to play agni mazid Tricking Adi Mazid, the Fanisher. Yeah, I don't get it. They're all dark. Adi Mazid has to destroy fires. I'm confuzzled! <laughs> uh, let's move on. So, remember Metaphys Horus a while ago? How he was released and he was just kind of there? Yeah, they're making out an entire archetype now. <laughs> so, we got Metaphys Ragnarok, which is really, really cool because I remember having Ragnarok as a kid. The little level 4 monster that was uh, interesting and eventually got a fusion monster if I remember right. So this is like really, really cool and the artwork's just as good as in the original. Uh, so Lightworm Tuner effect, 1500 attack, 1000 defense. Okay, right away, I'm going to say this. We have no idea of a Metaphys Synchro other than Horus. So the fact that this guy is a tuner intrigues me. And also, every other Metaphys is higher than level 4. So I don't know what they're going to do with... Uh, the whole tuner part. <laughs> Level 4, 15 by 1000. It's the same stats as Ragnarok. You can only use this each of this card's uh, names effects once per turn. If this card is normal or special summon, you can banish three cards on the top of your deck, and if you do, this card gains 300 attack for each Metaphys card banished by this effect. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon one level 5 or higher Metaphys monster from your deck, and if you do, banish it during the end phase of the next turn. So, 
pretty good considering everything that the deck does. Uh, you get to banish your stuff from the top of your deck. You get to your attack for every Metaphys card. And of course that can trigger the Metaphys effects that we will be getting to here shortly. And then obviously you can spell some a level 5 or higher Metaphys monster from deck. Which is scary <laughs> because these things have big attack power. And then obviously <clears throat> that monster gets banished. So this is going to be intriguing. I gotta say I really like the idea of this deck. And I need some tea real quick because <laughs> my throat's killing me. <coughs> yeah, much better. So, Metaphys Tyrant Dragon. Yeah, Tyrant Dragon. <laughs> One of the worst dragons in the game. It's got some retrained as a Metaphys. Uh, I like how like all Metaphys monsters have like this ghostly air to them because they are supposed to be like ascended dragons that have like ascended past the physical realm. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Light Worm Effect, 2900 Attack, 2500 Defense, Level 8. I believe those are the same stats as the original Tyrant Dragon. Uh, except, obviously, it was an Earth. No, wait, I think it was a Fire. So, anyways, if this card is special by, by, the, by a Metal... I don't know why this is so hard to say. If this card was special summoned by a Metaphys Monster's Effect, it is unaffected by Trap Effects. And if it attacks a monster, it can make a second attack in a row. This is basically Tyrant Dragon's Effect, except he's not unaffected by Traps. I think the original Tyrant Dragon only, like, uh, prevented your opponent from activating traps in the battle phase or something. I can't remember. Uh, but this part, I know, is definitely from the original Tyrant Dragon. Uh, then, during the standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished, you can shuffle this card into the deck, special summon one Metaphys monster from your hand, and if you do, it is banished during the end phase of next turn. I kind of wish it was from deck, but uh, from hand, I guess. It unclogs the big guys, which is really nice. So, right away, I really like this. It's just a beater. <laughs> also, considering that this guy is a tuner, I kind of hope that maybe we'll get a Metaphys Quasar or something, because 4 plus 8 equals 12. That'd be cool. Metaphys Daedalus. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest. Out of all the artwork of all these Metaphys, this is my favorite. <laughs> this is beautiful. I want this. Mostly just for the artwork, because it is beautiful. <laughs> But yeah, it's Daedalus, uh, the Leviathan dude. White Worm effect, level 7, 20 seconds, 2600 attack, 1500 defense. I don't know why he became a worm when he was a sea serpent, uh, but oh well. I guess sea serpents are kind of like dragons. Uh, if this card is spell summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster effect, you can banish all their face up spell summon monsters on the field. That is scary, okay? Because you get rid of all of your opponent's stuff. But you can also get rid of your stuff, which will trigger your uh, Banished Metaphys monster effects. Uh, during the standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished, you can shuffle this card into deck, then banish one Metaphys card from your deck except himself. So pretty good, because that can just get like a little loop going, which is nice. Then we got Metaphys Neftis. Uh, another thing that confuses me, because it's a phoenix, not a dragon, and only dragons can become worms, but eh, whatever. Uh, so... Uh, light Worm effect, level 8, 2400 attack, 1600 defense. If this card is spell summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster, you can banish all set spell or trap cards on the field. During the standby phase of the next turn after this card is banished, you can shuffle this card into the deck. Add one Metaphys card from your deck to your hand, except itself. Again, pretty good, and I think that's a Are those pyramids in the background? Those are pyramids in the background, heck yeah. Uh, reference to the fact that Neftis is a, uh, uh, Egyptian thing. I couldn't remember the word for the life of me. Then we got the field spell, because of course everything has to have a field spell now. Uh, Metaphys Factor. Once per turn, when you normal summon a, le su a level 5 or higher Metaphys monster, you can do it without tributing monsters. And if you do, banish that monster during the end phase of the next turn. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your Metaphys monster effects. That is stupid. Okay, so not only can you normal summon your level 5 or higher Metaphys without tributing, uh, but it also lets you banish them during the next turn. Uh, end phase. Also, your opponent can't activate anything in response to your Metaphys monster effects. So your opponent can't stone strike any of your Metaphys monster effects. Your opponent can't uh, ghost ash it. Your opponent can't negate it with some, uh, oh we already said some strike. Your opponent can't affect fail or anything. That is stupid and I love it. <laughs> that can be really, really scary. Because uh, obviously we, we don't know the full archetype, but god wow, that can be devastating uh, to your opponent depending on what we get uh, in the future, like, what else is coming out for the deck? I mean, like, imagine, like, your opponent can't solve and strike your data list effect. That is scary. Uh, then we got a continuous trap for the deck. Metaphys Dimension. Uh, let's see if we can't take a look at this artwork. 
Uh, I don't know which monster that is. It kind of looks like uh, Metaphys Dark Arm Dragon. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks like Dark Arm Dragon. Hang on, I'm going to take a look. Because I know Arm Dragon, he got a worm counterpart. Whoops, come on. Yeah. I don't know, what did they add? Armed. Yeah, Metaphys. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that, that looks like Metaphys Arm Dragon. Uh, I wonder if you can actually play the old Metaphys monsters in this. It's going to be interesting. And you can only use each effect to discard's names uh, effects once per turn. If your opponent special summons a monster, you can target one of your banished Metaphys monsters, special summon it. And if you do, banish it during the end phase of the next turn. If this card is already face up, if another Metaphys card or cards is banished, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. That is, again, also very really scary, because if you're, if another Metaphys card is banished, which you're going to want to be doing all the time, you can just banish anything your opponent controls. Granted though, it does target, but it doesn't say it's got to be face up or set or anything. You can target anything, which is really, really good because you can get rid of your opponent's back row, you can get rid of your opponent's monsters, and their pendulums, whatever, which is really, really, really good. And I, I really like this overall. I can't wait to see what else we're getting for this deck. Uh, I want to see them actually be able to work with the old Metaphys cards, because that would be interesting to uh, see if they do work. I mean, obviously they are supposed to, because they have Metaphys in the name. But it'll be interesting if the playstyle functions with the old Metaphys cards. And then, we got the some more stuff for the Cyverse deck. So Cyverse Link, or Cyburst Link, I don't know where they're getting Cyburst from, considering in the... Uh, animator called Cyverse. Granted though, I wonder, let's go over to YJ Org real quick. Because uh, we got official link proxies for the... Do, 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 do. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter who I click on. Yeah, it's Cyverse! Not Burst, I think. That looks like a V. Maybe it is a B. I can't tell. Maybe it is a B. Wow. It, that just does not roll off the tongue as easy as Cyverse. But anyways, Cyburst Link. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be another structure deck where most of the structure deck is new cards. Whereas in the past, structure decks have only given us like three to four new cards. Uh, this one along with the Pendulum one are going to be almost entirely new cards. <laughs> which is really cool. I like that. Granted though, obviously the previous structure deck with new cards, and almost comp with comprised of almost entirely new cards, was turned into a set for us, because Konami wants to make more money out of us, with the last Pendulum-related thing. So hopefully that does not happen to freaking Cyburst Link. Uh, so first and foremost, we got Enco Talker, Light Cyburst Link Effect Monster. Uh, obviously you're supposed to be like a... God dang it! I, I wanted to open up the... I can't open up the picture? Wow, that's annoying. I can, uh, normally I can just like middle click it, uh, but obviously it's supposed to be like a uh, what's the word I'm look, looking for? It's a mirror to like Deco Talker. Like he's got a shield instead of a big great sword. I think he's got a little sword over here, but I can't tell. He needs two or more cyber monsters, and obviously he's a link three. Uh, once per turn during your players, uh, once to per turn during before damage calculation on a monster at discard's link point battles an opponent's monster of higher attack. You can activate this effect. That monster you control cannot be destroyed by battle, and you take no battle damage from that battle. After that damage calculation, I have either discard or a monster at discard's link point gain attack equal to the attack of that monster's uh, up to the opponent's monster until the end of this turn. So, with Enco Talker, you can attack into something your opponent has, uh, or they can attack into one of your monsters, and then you can save that mon your monster from being destroyed in battle. You take no battle damage from that. And then you can give either Enco Talker or one of the other monsters at this guy's link point uh, the attack of the monster that just battled, like your opponent's monster. That is pretty good. I like that. It gives you battle protection, gives you a way to get over big monsters. I like that. It's pretty good. I like it. And then, let's see here. I think that's it for the new links. Okay, and then we got Clay Knot. I'm not sure if I'm... Pre clean, Clay Knot, Clay Knot. Aunt. <laughs> Level 3 light cybers so type effect monster, 15 by 15. If this card was normal, summon all cybers monsters you control, gain 500 attack and defense during your turn. If this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy one cybers monster you control or have in your hand instead. Pretty good, I like that. Uh, boots staggered, light cybers effect. 
Level 5, 2300 attack, 500 defense. You can only use this card's first effect once per turn. When a Cyrus monster is normal summoned to your side of the field, you can spell summon this card from your hand. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can spell summon one stag token. Uh, Cyverse type, Earth, level 100. Zero, zero. Uh, that's pretty good. I like it. Being able to generate tokens, which you can then use for link summons. Pretty nice. And obviously, if you like normal summon Clay Knight, and then uh, his effect will trigger, and then you chain this thing's effect, and then special summon him, and he'll go up by 500. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, backlinker. This thing is stupid. Okay. So, Dark Cyrus effect. <laughs> Level 3, 1600 attack, 0 defense. If only your opponent controls a monster in the link monster uh, in the extra monster zone, you can spell summon this card from your hand. You can tribute this card, shuffle all monsters in the extra monster zones into the deck. Also, you cannot spell summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn. So, if you're playing a non extra deck focused deck, let's let's face it, uh, aside from like link focused decks, no one's going to be playing anything from the extra deck anymore. Uh, this thing. You can just normal summon it or special summon it if your opponent has a monster in the extra monster zone and then tribute it off and everything in the extra monster zones gets shuffled back in the deck. That is really good spot or well, not even just spot removal. That's just mass removal. <laughs> Granted though, it can only get rid of a max of two cards. Uh, now, if your opponent has uh, the extra link thing going on where they have like it like set up like this or you know like they got their both the, the uh, extra monster zones taken that can get rid of both of your opponent's monsters it's non-targeting non-destruction removal and that's the big thing and that is really really good and obviously it can get rid of anything else your opponent has in the extra monster zones so that can be really really good I think this guy might actually end up seeing a lot of competitive play just for that. And obviously, if you're playing something like Chur Draco or something, uh, where you don't use the extra deck, you won't have to care about the freaking extra deck thing. That is really, really good. I can't help but wonder what else other people are going to be thinking about this thing. Uh, Cybernet Backdoor, uh, quick play spell card. You can activate one card with this card's names per turn. Uh, target one Cyrus monster you control, banish it, and if you do, add one Cyrus monster of an attack lower than the banished monster's original attack and from your hand, uh, from your deck to your hand. Uh, return that banished monster to your field during your next standby phase, and if you do, it can attack directly that turn. So, the big thing about this is that you can banish your things in your extra monster zone, so then, like, you can, you know, like, you can banish your deco talker, search out of anybody, really, and then your deco talker, whenever he comes back, he'll go into the main monster zone. And then, hey, you can attack directly. I really like that. This is an interesting card. It'll be interesting to see how many Cyrus decks actually play it. Uh, I can't wait to see <laughs> what this is really going to be able to do. I like it that this deck has a search card now because Cyrus was drastically missing out on that. They did not have any way of searching out Cyrus monsters. Uh, easily, at least. So, overall, I'm really hyped for the Cyrus stuff. I really like the Cyrus typing in general. And I'm honestly mostly hyped for the Metaphys stuff. It's really cool. I can't wait to see what else is coming out for this. Uh, the Voldex look interesting. I don't... Just judging by what they have for now, unless, like, they have some, like, really broken card that has not been revealed yet, I don't think they'll be that amazing. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what people do with them. So, guys, I'm going to cut it off there. This is almost a half an hour long video. We will cover the big stuff in the Duelist Pack <laughs> and the promos in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. See you all later and peace out.